بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم our lecture today is common problems of composite causes and potential solutions as we said in the last lecture that we must have complete isolation of the field so if there is failed or poor isolation of the operating field or area so it will lead to the failure of the composite restoration what's the causes of poor isolation of the operating areas or field number one rubber dam or leaking rubber dam either no rubber dam or leaking of rubber dam either inadequate cut and roll careless technique preparation is so deep subgingival in subgingival area so the isolation will not be completed so sometimes there is fluids from gingival sulcus gingival fluid bleeding from gingiva so there is no complete isolation So how to do solutions for these poor isolations of the operating area? Number one, we must use a better technique for isolation, good adaptation for the rubber dam, good sealing of the rubber dam, to the use of matrix to help isolation. As we said, we must use the matrix band retainer to isolate the cavity preparation. Number three, use of non-bonded restorative material repeat bonding procedure if the area is contaminated if we see there is contamination or fluid in the area we must re treat the area by acid etching bonding and then we put the composite so re repeating the procedure from the beginning to have a good result white line or halo around the enamel margin as we see in this picture this line this line surrounded the composite resin restorations in the enamel these lines sometimes appear after complete of the filling so the solutions to remove this line or halo around the enamel margins is by repeat the procedures of acid etching bonding uh, for the enamel and repeat the putting of the restoration again the following factors cause micro fracture of the marginal enamel number one traumatic contouring or finishing technique two inadequate itching and bonding of that area three high intensity light curing resulting in excessive polymerization stresses So the potential solutions for this problem include number one as we say the itching priming and bonding of the area number two conservative conservatively remove the fault and re restore area use a traumatic finishing technique example light intermittent pressure three use slow start polymerization techniques five leave as is Here, as we see in this picture, the third cause for failure of composite restoration is the, the voids. Is voids. The, the causes of voids include, number one, mixing of self-cured composite, 
self-cured composite means the base and catalyst we mixed it to have polymerization so the mixing sometimes during mixing preparation will lead to the formation of the voids number two spaces left between increments during insertion as we said when we put composite inside the cavity preparation we must put it in an increment or layer by layer and the thickness of the layer, layer should not exceed than 2 mm during these procedures sometimes voids interrupt between the layer and cause these space formation or voids formation a sticky composite sticky composite pulling away from the preparation during insertion sometimes it, the thickness of composite will lead to a sticky consistency or consistency of the composite the, the, the sticky consistency of composite will leading to pulling away from the preparation site and causes voids sometimes it stick with instrument and lead to formation of the voids as we said before if we notice these voids after finishing procedures uh, before finishing and polishing we can add it composite and then we made a finishing and polishing but sometimes if we do not notice these voids and then after period of time the discoloration of this area will appear so we can do preparing for this area by number one prepare the margins voids by preparing the area and restoring it so we do the procedure again acid etching preparation acid etching priming bonding and we added composite and we must be so more careful during this a procedure or technique to avoid the return of the voids inside the preparation or restoration here in this picture we see a weak or missing proximal contact area in class 2 class 3 and class 4 so this is another problem associated with the composite restoration we must avoid it or we can then repair it causes of weak and missing proximal contacts include inadequate contoured matrix band that's mean when we apply the matrix band retainer we put it not correctly or inadequately this will lead to missing or weak contact area inadequate wedging sometimes we we put the wedge between the teeth or in the proximal area not correct or not in uh, in the right space or not uh, the right wedge we put also will cause missing or weak contact area matrix band movement when we do when we put the restoration or the composite inside the cavity sometimes the matrix band move during this procedure also will lead the missing of a proximal sticky composite sometimes the consistency of the composite which is sticky will pulling away from the matrix contact area and also during insertion will cause the weak and missing of contact area matrix band is too thick sometimes the choose when we choose the matrix band is too thick so when we remove it we leave a space or wide space between two adjacent teeth which is lead to missing of the proximal contact so we must choose the appropriate matrix band when we do the filling or restoration
to the solution of peak or missing contact area included properly contour of the matrix band so we must adapt the matrix band very correct in its place before we putting the or adaptation of the composite material use firm preoperative and insertion wedging technique good wedging we must put the wedge in its correct place use a matrix system that place this matrix only around the proximal surface to be restored like sectional matrix there is some special type which is called sectional matrix for composite restoration use it uh, give us the correct proximal contour so we must use this type uh, four use a hand instrument to hold the matrix number five be very careful with insertion technique in order not to uh, stick the composite with the instrument or with the band or with the wedge so the thickness of the mat should be correct in order not to leave any space after removal of it Number five, incorrect shed. Causes of an incorrect shed include number one, inappropriate operator lightening while selecting the shade. Selecting the shade after the tooth is dried. Selecting of, sh of shed must be the tooth is moist, not dried. Shade tab not matching the actual composite shade. Wrong shade selected. This is another problem associated with the composite restoration. So the resolution of faulty shade selection include number one, use natural light if possible. Two, select the shade before isolating the tooth. As we said, must be moist tooth procedure. The site must be moist, not completely dried. Three, preoperatively place some of the selected shed on the tooth and cure, then remove. That's to say, we take some of the material from the compost tube and put it on the tooth structure to choose the correct shade before we put it in the cavity. Do not shine operating light directly on the area during shed selection. That means the light of the device must be away from the patient mouth. And we also understand the typical zone of different shades for natural teeth. As we say, sometimes we do mixing of two shades, A1, A2, or A2 with A3, A3 with A1, to have a typical shade for the natural teeth. Number six, poor retention. Causes of poor retention include number one, inadequate cavity preparation. Number two, contamination of operating area, as we said, poor isolation. Number three, poor bonding technique. That means the procedure acid aging priming and bonding will is poor. Number four, using of bonding material from different systems. That means we take the bonding from system and the composite resin from another system will lead to poor retention or failure of the restoration. Potential solutions for this problem include prepare the tooth with the appropriate bevel or flares and secondary retention features when necessary. Number two, keep the area isolated totally while bonding and acid etching. Number three, follow the manufacturer direction explicitly. Number four, do not use bonding material from different systems 
and the composite from other system. We must have the same system. The other problem, it is the contouring and finishing problem. Causes of contouring or finishing problems include number one, injuring adjacent and prepared tooth structure. That means when prepared, the cavity sometimes will touch the adjacent teeth with the turbine or with hand piece lead to removal of some tooth structure of the adjacent teeth, which is natural tooth structure or intact tooth structure. Number two, over contouring of the restoration during finishing and polishing. Number three, under contouring of the restoration. Number four, crea creating inadequate anatomic tooth form. That means the contour, the outer contour of the tooth uh, will not be returned to the natural tooth structure. The solution for this problem include number one, be careful with the use of rotary instrument. That means during cavity preparation, we must be very careful not to touch the adjacent tooth or teeth. Have a proper matrix with appropriate axial and line angle. As we say, there is special type with sectional matrix band. Uh, give us the good uh, embrasure area and good contact area. Number three, create embrasure to match the adjacent tooth embrasure form. Number four, use a properly shaped contouring instrument for the area being contoured. Number five, remember the outline form of the preparation to return to it. Lastly, after we finish the restoration, view the restoration from all angles as it is contoured.